Hi there. So in this video, I'm actually not going to show you Hype Lambda. I'm going to show you a feature of Hype Lambda, which is called record slicing. And you can actually uh, test this yourself by going to sakila.aista.com and logging in with username and password admin. We're actually allowing everybody to log in here, uh, at which point it's probably going to like Google Chrome's going like, to complain about your password. However, the purpose of this site is actually to allow everybody to enter. Now, let me uh, find, for instance, actor here. And then let's click F12 and let's choose the network tab here. Because I want to show you a really cool feature in uh, Magic and Hype Lambda. You see, if I now edit the first name of this Penelope 2 uh, actor and I save my record, then what you see uh, going over the wire is only the first name and the actor ID. Now, if I edit it again and I edit uh, both the first name and the last name, I click cache return and have a look at what goes over the wire. You see both first name and last name goes over the wire in addition to actor ID. Let me illustrate again by editing her again, and this time only changing the last name. Now, if I look at this one, you see only the last name. This is called record slicing, and um, it's actually a really, really cool feature. Why? Because it completely eliminates the requirements for what is commonly referred to as a locking of records. What is a locking of records, you may ask at this point in time? Well, it's basically a side effect of OOP, which again, of course, is uh, the software development industry's equivalent of its own personal trillion dollar disaster. As everybody has been following me for a while, no, I am not a particular fan of OOP. I personally think that OOP is schizophrenia and it's a mass psychosis on the software development industry. This is why you don't find any OOP constructs whatsoever in Hype Lambda, because I think OOP is brain damage. You see, the benefits of record slicing, you see, imagine, so I'm Thomas, right? Imagine I have two colleagues. Let's go to a slightly more complex object. Let's do address here. Imagine I'm clicking edit here on this record. At the exact same time, or like five seconds later or 10 seconds later, it doesn't matter. Let's say now I have a colleague whose name is Bob. He's clicking edit on the same record. Then I have another colleague called maybe, I don't know, Alice. She also clicks edit on the record. If I now edit this one, write two, and then I save it. And then two seconds later, Bob, saves his changes. Maybe Bob changed another part of the record, changed district instead of the address. Now, what happens is that uh, Bob overwrites my changes. So my changes are lost. Now, this is actually an entire axiom in computer science because of OOP. Why is OOP the source of this problem? Well, because it's so bloody convenient to have a model type, implying you're saving your whole freaking model. Now, if you carefully watch what goes over the wire now, as I edit this field only, I'm only sending that field. Well, actually I changed Alberta at the same time, so let me do it once more. And this time I'm only gonna change district and save it. As you can see now, it only passes Alberta. And if I was to transmit the entirety of my record, meaning the whole object as a strong type, then it would update every single field. Now, this would require more bandwidth. In addition to that, it would create a requirement for record-based locking. There are two basic types of database locking. You have optimistic locking, you have pessimistic locking. Optimistic locking is typically implemented through features such as the ones you have in SQL Server called draw version. Or if you go to Cosmos DB, you have e-tag. If you go to stuff such as Couchbase, etc., I think they also have some e-tag feature, etc., etc. Now, all of those features are garbage. They shouldn't exist in the first place, and they're basically just a side effect of OOP being garbage, right? Now, this feature of Hyper Lambda Magic completely eliminates uh, the entirety of the requirements for such. Uh, lockings whatsoever. Meaning, if you have a system that is like implemented in traditional OOP, literally, this is not even a joke, the system is not a multi-user system. 
because of this problem, because it transmits the whole record to the server, resulting in race conditions and or overwriting other people's changes. Now, if you look at how this is actually implemented in Hyperland, let's log into my tablet here. Let's open up tools, open up tools. Let's go to Hyper IDE and let's just find any put endpoint. It's only a question of put. Let's open up a CRM here. Let's open up accounts put here. Okay, so it's passes in name and status. Now, if I don't pass name here or status, right, then it's still, uh, let me see if I can find a status here, uh, accounts get, okay, uh, I need an ID here. Okay, let's do ID one, uh, accounts put, and then I remove status, and I pass in one being Akmink, then it's updating only the name field. If I have a model through a strongly type, God forbid, implemented using garbage OOP structs, forcing me to write stuff such as status, transmit that at the same time, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm saving the whole object and I run the risk of actually overwriting Bob's changes. If he had bad luck and happened to click the save button one second before I clicked it, resulting in a race condition. Now, Hyperlander completely eliminates this entire axiom of problems. Now, implementing support for optimistic locking and pessimistic locking. Pessimistic locking is a nightmare. Pessimistic locking basically means that you have to physically lock the record on the server every time somebody clicks edit in your GUI. Simply from an implementation point of view, it's a nightmare to implement. I mean, half your code is going to end up be like pessimistic locking and penetrating through to your GUI layer. But even its most uh, simplest version, optimistic locking, implying having a row version or an e-tag or something on your field and then passing in the e-tag or the row version as a part of your where criteria. And if it updates null records, you return an error to the caller saying somebody raised you to the spot. What do you want to do? Reload the original object or force your changes through, etc. blah, blah, blah. Now, regardless of how you try to do database record locking, it's garbage, regardless, it doesn't matter. So the way this works, if, is if you see on both of these fields are optional, right? Unless I explicitly create a mandatory validator below here, doing like mandatory like this, then both of these fields are optional, right? And then further down here, it adds into values. Every single argument, starting from the first argument, implying minus the primary key, up until the thousandth arguments. So whatever arguments I pass in here ends up down here as values. Blah, 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 blah. So if I don't have a status field, I don't get a status field. If I don't have a name field, I don't get a name field. Now, the way this translates into SQL is that it translates into something resembling the following updates. I don't know, users set username equal blah, 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 where blah, blah, blah. Now, if I pass in an object, a strongly typed object, then it will end up becoming password equal blah, blah, blah. I don't know, create that equal blah, blah, blah foo underscore bar equal blah, 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 at which point I am in a row locking scenario and I actually have to do either optimistic locking or pessimistic locking or God knows what. Now, this problem simply does not exist in Hyperlander. Now, there's a bajillion similar types of features in Hyperlander that completely eliminates entire axioms of problems related to creating web apps. Have that in mind. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.